This one right here, Majesty of Fantasy Kingdom Sim Review, let's get started. Hey hey people, Seth here. Up, man? Today, I'll be covering one of my favorite games, Majesty okay. of Fantasy Kingdom Sim. Bro, the city god looks menacing, man, holy shit. <laughs> While the game title might have you thinking that you'll be directly Bro. managing a kingdom like some strategy game, this is a little misleading. No. This is something different, this is like before my time, like I grew up with uh, SE1, Sucker 1, and Age of Empires 1, like... Bro, I think this was this game was made before that time, man. As the sovereign of Ardania, you have before the 2000s at least have no direct control be. over your heroes and can only influence them with promises of money or guilt tripping them emotionally into doing what you want. Oh. In many ways, being the king of Ardania is so money is more concern here. Similar to being a mother, because try as you might to lead your children down a good path in life, they will inevitably turn to drinking, gambling, and robbing each other's gravestones instead. Holy it's shit. also the first. Oh, it should be. First and only game to be voiced by William Wallace. Your Excellency, I offer my Bro. most humble introduction. <laughs> Bro, both, the voice acting back in the day, it was so cliche, it was... Uh, yeah, people today, they get, get offended by that shit, but fuck them. Like, for real, this, this voice acting back in, in the day, like, especially with Age of Empires 2, they, they put emotion behind it, it was like... Uh, you notice that that person behind that shit, who who reads all this shit, like they are skilled in what they are doing. And today, if you are uh, listening to any quest giver, I don't fucking care. And the newer games, yeah, but they just uh, speak with like the normal American English uh, accent, like um, it's fucking boring and uh, nothing unique. Like where's the weirdness in it? Like that makes the game fun, I guess. I but am Lord Ben Fairweather. This is good I show. was your mother's most trusted advisor. <laughs> I submit my services to you in that continued capacity. All the NPCs in this game have their own particular assortment of tastes and motivations, which you must play around and accommodate to actually finish your fucking main objective for each mission. For example, no. warriors will honorably defend the surrounding lands, but are generally too obese to get very far. Rangers love exploring and will gladly map out the fog of war. Some thieves will steal treasure and wait for other heroes to die so they can loot the shit. What the hell? But wait, leech from your own population is that very effective or from enemies? Get out of their bodies, and wizards will generally disappoint you and die. In the off chance one of them manages to survive long oh. enough to actually level up, you'll have a teleporting demigod capable of conquering the entire map alone. Oh, Except shit. he won't. Uh, more likely, he'll use his powers to teleport out of social situations and hide inside his tower, reading shitty Daojins all day instead. Half the fun of the game is watching the AI in bemused frustration while they drink for hours on end, while their own tavern is being set on fire by trolls, besides their own base inclinations to fight monsters. Slave pits, holy shit, this is some, some slaneshi shit. ...and actually be useful, heroes can also be influenced by... Like the sound of it, if you had that for a moment, holy shit. ...by offering bounties. These can be placed on unexplored regions to reward exploration, or on monsters and their lairs to reward killing. Bro, am I stupid? Like, every Chaos God has slaves, I think. Maybe M Nurgle doesn't? Of Irrelevant. course, the effectiveness of a bounty is proportional to how dangerous the damn thing is. Paying out a hundred gold reward for a giant rat might be reasonable, but killing a Medusa or a Minotaur might demand a higher premium. Thieves, however, are not constrained by such obstacles as personal safety, and will die without hesitation for the possibility of a huge paycheck. The biggest fantasy in Majesty is, of course, having other people pay you taxes. Tax collectors are the lifeblood of your economy, and must be protected at all costs to ensure the future of your feudal <laughs> society. Oh, holy shit, he got one tap. Society. Tax collectors F. are fragile and slow, owing to the weight of all the coins they must bravely carry back to the keep, leaving them open to attack by gigantic rat men that pop out of sewer grates. Infrastructure Scaven is a mess real. in majesty, so you'll need to plan around like a boy I must stole from the shit. Holy damn. On the dynamically generated like well, my fantasy. Was it that old? Like 40k was a uh... Much older than fantasy. I don't know. I don't know how old Warhammer fantasy was. 
Unexpected hazards that threaten your matter. royal Doesn't livelihood. Matter. Alternatively, you can let all the tax collectors get murdered in the streets and instead ask the Thieves Guild to diplomatically convince oh. the peasantry to fork yeah. over their tax money. Personal treasure and bounties collected by heroes are considered untaxable income and must be extracted from them through other capitalistic means, such as VAT for purchasing better equipment, supplies, and alcoholic beverages in many ways. Most of them- Bro, this, this view is much better, like, the closed-up shop was too much, like, you can't see jack shit. This is the, the strategic map, which is actually important, man. The money you spend on heroes will eventually be redistributed back into your own coffers. Despite lacking control of people, you do have full control of what to build, research, and upgrade. Your choices will influence whether or not the kingdom will thrive and attract the guilds and races necessary for- Bro, I actually want to play this, like this in a newer version, like so an RTS where you re can't really control your own soldiers, you just pay them. Your mission success. Among the races, you can choose to live alongside humans are gnomes, which bring cheap and unskilled labor from their ghettos. Dwarves, oh, which be. bring industry Less and automated beings. ballista towers to ensure your kingdom's safety. And the elves, which bring casinos, gambling, and prostitution. Oh. The elves also increase okay. the profits of your markets and are very tolerant of other non-human... Tolerance, peace. <laughs> what is going which on is here? Bro why they shoot gnome children across Ardania's borders. For some reason, gnomes and dwarves are not as tolerant as the elves and will refuse to live alongside racist trade sanctions. Okay, they're right. Aside from other races, you can also choose to bring in different, mutually exclusive temples, either picking the monks and healers of order, or the nature cultists and necromancers of chaos. On top of that, you can also choose to worship the sun or moon temple sect. Alternatively, sun, you can obviously. choose to pick none of them like I do, and build a temple to Kralm, the pagan god of war, who hates every other god because they screwed him over. If you do, you can build Damn. no other temple, and who really cares when you can do this TPS buff what was that? very very easy oh, oh holy shit okay Despite the cozy exterior appearance, Majesty is fucking hard. Completing some of the more challenging missions requires meticulous planning and perfect execution. So don't be surprised if you find yourself retrying them many times. My copy comes with a Northern Realms expansion pack, and altogether you have about two dozen missions. But these can easily each take an hour to finish. No strategy is really perfect, so you'll have to experiment for yourself to find what works best in a given situation. The game is ripe and dripping with charm. It's extremely fun to play and all the voice acting, character interactions and music make it very memorable. It's aged like wine and nothing really comes close. You can easily grab it on good old games or Steam for about $10 and have a fantastic time. This review is rather short, much like gnome lifespans. And for this reason, shut the fuck up. You don't have to pay for it. May has been a busy month. But hopefully, June will leave more time for videos. A warm thanks to the many members of the Merchants Guild whose generous monetary Perfect. investments Go make this them, all man. possible. You're all wonderful. Bro, like Seth. <laughs> I'm quite me. <laughs> okay. Bro, Seth does. Uh, this is truly original content which you can truly support. Like, I, I can't say nothing against it. Like, yeah, he's controversial, but that's, that's a good shit. If you, if you don't offend anyone, man, you're fucking boring. <laughs> That's it. And if you want to see more of these reactions, uh, I guess you can leave a like and subscribe, man. Like, I I do them every single day. I'm a daily uploader. Quite competitive right now. Insane. We are nearing 500 subs. And I'm already thanking you, man, for the insane support right now. Like, 500 subs after, like, one year of content creations. That's good for me. That's good for me. Like, I tried different games and shit, but yeah, that's irrelevant. And that's actually it. I guess see you next time. I try to do some other things and uh, accept just reactions. Yeah, I know. Insane. But yeah, that's actually it. I guess see you next time. Wafer. Out, man.